Sup guys, welcome to a new video. Um, today it's a different video. We will cover the scripting of the game Make a Server Beta. So we'll do this today. It's something else, you know. Don't mind my avatar, guys. So. First up we have this beautiful command executor. Now real quick, I want to say that these are prompts, okay? For the sake of the video, I'm gonna be working with prompts. Um, but if you try to save them in your object saves right here, they lose the ability of having this, um, I don't know what you call it. This event thing where you can press E you know it loses this and GUI doesn't so if you ever want to save your script I advise using GUI or prompts but you have to make them visible if you make them invisible you like never find them again bro of the easiest one okay literally every person that comes to me or to some server and says yo I can script just knows how to use command executors and events that's all they know but after you've watched this video you'll probably know a lot more than the average player so the command executor has a little class ID it's called class ID this is the one, you can set it right here, under M, so this little setting wheel. Now you can open the menu right here under configure, and then you can set the command. It's basically an admin command, like jump player. Player is the value of the player, so PLR player, okay? So if player clicks this they jump, if you make an all right here, everybody will jump. And an others than everybody, but the person in this picture right here will jump. Alright, let's test this. Um, and this is the prompt menu. You can make it buy for a stat or execute. Which we'll be using the execute one. The prompt fires a signal and the signal is sent to one and as we remember one is our command executor so we click e and we jump and that's the whole magic of scripting all right this isn't harder i never use these actually this is a delayer so the delayer gets a signal from the prompt, like the executor, and it basically makes the delay a wait time, one second, this is one second, and it sends to a signal class ID, one, one is the executor, so what happens if we click on this button, well the prompt, as you can see right here, sends a signal to our delayer and the delayer um, gets the signal, waits one second and then sends the signal it got to the executor. Let's test it. One second, alright. One. One. One second. And by the way, <laughs> this is the rate limiter. Um, you can tell me down in the comments if you know how to use this. Next event is the touch event. Now this is actually an event, we're coming to the events, yes. You want to know how these work. But first we're going to the touch event. So the touch event um, gets a signal from the part. In this case, this is the part. It has the class ID 3. Yes, you can add class IDs to anything. 
like this block can have the class ID 84. Alright, anything can have class IDs. Well, what happens if you touch it? I can show you what happens if we review the script. So, this has number 3. I click on the touch event, open the configure, 3, trigger class ID. And 4 is the signal class ID it will send a signal to. In our case, it's this executor 4 and it will make us say hit. So let's test it. Hit, see? Hit. Now we come to our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful events. Well, I'm gonna join. Well, first, how do events work? Well, you have the death event, the join event, the leave event, the spawn event, and the chat event. Since the last update, you have the chat event. Now, I gave all of them numbers, so 5, it'll send to the signal ID 5 if a character spawns. If a character dies, it'll send to 5. If a character joins, it'll send to 5. And if a character leaves, then it'll send to 5. What is 5? It's this beautiful executor, 5, as you can see right here. And it will notice everyone. What does this mean? If I die, it'll notice me, send me a notification that says event fired. Um, if I spawn, respawn after dying, it'll send me the notification. So everybody to the server. If a player leaves or joins, it'll send the same notification. And if I say something in chat, like a dot, event fired. Now I'm gonna join on an alt. Event fired, event fired. You might be wondering why did two events fire? Well, this is pretty simple. The join event fired because a player joined, and the spawn event fired because a player spawned. You know, the character, the player, is at the spawn right now. So obviously, it shoots both events. It can be kind of annoying. But it's pretty useful, trust me. I leave on my alt, you see, disappeared, event fired. This was the leave event. Now if you reset, the death and the spawn event will fire because you die, death event, you spawn, spawn event. <coughs> right? At least I think so. Please. No! Wait, I'm confused. Normally both events fire. Um, this is a sequencer. Our next big enemy. Now we have our usual prompt. The signal class ID 6. It will send to number 6, which is the sequence. 6, you see it right here. You can change it to anything you want. But they can't double it themselves so if this sends to one um, it sends to this okay and if both of these have one it'll activate both of them very annoying now we open the sequencer and we see repeat times normally there's a three but you can just make it a one how many how many times you want to repeat it you can make it a hundred times in my case I'm gonna make it one time now here's the signal class IDs you can put in so the stuff you want to happen, so you can make it a 2, you can make it a 1, as long as they're defined, so 1, as we remember, executor, 1, jump player, 1, 1, 1, 1, 4 ones. What is this you might ask? Well, this is the delay time. This is why I never use delayers, okay? Never use them. You don't need them. You're just gonna delay one signal. You don't need to delay one signal, you can just repeat with a sequence and add time right here. 0.7, so 0 0.7 seconds and this is 2.3 seconds, but there's nothing here. So the, here the sequence ends, okay, it cuts off right here at the last signal class ID. Let's put it to the test, we should jump 4 times. 1, 2, 3. 
Alright, we can make the time like here one second and let it repeat two times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See? Works perfectly well. This is the behavior event, I think, behavior changer. So what does this do? Well, you see you have this button over here and if you press N on your keyboard, it will send you right here. And this is the behavior tool. You can choose if a part should be anchored or not, if it, you can walk through it or not, or if it shall not have mass. Well, since the newest update rolled out, you can now have an event for that. It's called Behavior Changer. I gave it number 7, so again, this prompt, number 7, alright, it fires to number 7. Number 7 looks like this, this is the behavior changer. So we have this block right here, it's number 8. As I said, parts can have, also everything can have a class ID. Since like, I think the beginning of this year or something, I don't know. Or ending of, of last year. So number 7. This shoots to number 7. Here you put in what part you want to change. The physics of so in my case it's number eight we can yeah we'll leave it at number eight i don't have anything else prepared <laughs> yeah. the menu. should it anchor off off means no anchor on means anchor toggle toggle i don't know um and the star means just leave it how it is so off can collide we don't care massless we don't care so what does it do It'll unanchor this block, alright? Ready? Pretty easy, right? And if we now add can collide off, it falls through because it cannot collide with the floor and it's unanchored. And that's pretty easy, right? So, as I mentioned earlier, the chat event is an event and it fires when somebody sends a message in chat. Like event fired. This time, it's a different chat event, it sends to 455. 455 is this thing, yes, we're talking about logic gates. 455. Now, I want you to not be confused when I open this menu, because I was confused at first. This is the menu, 988. The incoming signal from the chat event, which is 455 sends to the logic gate 455 incoming signal here should be 455 and then it'll the question mark is all of this i put else to zero because it's not important for now it's like if something and then else so if this is not true then send to whatever signal class that you put in in my I never really put a signal class ID right here, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Now you can leave it at two equals, I'm not really, I'm new to this alright, it's, it's a new update, I had a long break from this game, but yeah, so message, message is msg, you know, chat event, you send a message, it's called a message. So if you get the signal from a chat event, you have to put msg and then double equals jump. So if your message, if somebody writes jump in the chat and it's true, then it'll send to 988. You know, you put a signal ID 988 and this is 988 and it'll jump the player. Pretty simple, right? So yeah, let's test it out. We type hi in the chat. Event fired, nothing happened here. If we type jump, we jump, alright? Pretty simple. You can always go back in the video. Um, <laughs> my favorite. Gambling, guys. Gambling? Yes, they added gambling. Oh, dang it. Prompt 45, alright? 45 is this beautiful randomizer. 45. The incoming signal, which is 45, will have this, 
and here's the percent chance so there's a 20% chance the signal it sends a signal to 451 it's kind of confusing how they put it this is the else like there's an 80% chance that 741 is fired and just a 20% chance that 451 is fired so here you put the chances 20% 20% chance, chance that 451 is fired and 80% chance that 741 is fired. This is 741, it'll notice us bad luck and 451 jump play. It's, it might look a little hard but it's just because like these arrows are a little bit confusing. So if this dice lands on 20% it fires 451. Always put the result behind the dice, okay? Whatever you want to have this chance has to stand right here behind the dice. And the rest chance, like if this was 30% and this 70%. Might be difficult, you have to try it. 20% um, chance we jump, alright? Bad luck. Jump. 20% chance. Good luck. Bad luck, bad luck, jump. Now I have two pretty cool examples for you. The first one is my loading screen, so if a player joins the game, 510. 510 is the ID of the sequencer. The sequencer 111, 222, 323, 444, 555, 201, 111, cam player 11. You know, pretty neat stuff our camera and it'll basically be a loading screen and this menu screen right here let's test it it was at this moment he oh lived. no he fucked up i used the same id twice oh no this is a good example why you should never use the same class id twice I used the same class ID over here, 1 1 2 2. Lastly, we have color changers. So they'll basically change the color of whatever you put here, class ID 33. 33. Um, don't be confused by this hex code. It's basically just the color, you write in the color of 1 1. This older, older color, you can put in older, it shows up right here, and this is its hex code. So don't be confused by that. We're using a touch event for this, like back here we did the same. So if you touch 45, it fires 12. 12 is the sequencer. Da, da, da. Repeat one time. All pretty easy stuff. Now if we touch 45, the wall turns uh, this color and you can walk through it. And that's the entire magic behind scripting. There's not really much more you need, like, this is all you need. By the way, I forgot to show you guys that if you click on the GUI, text button, image, image button, text, text button, and here put the signal ID. That was it for today's video. A bit different. Thank you all. Subscribe and see you in the next video.